as many of you know, I decided to do a few topical teachings throughout December, um, but I wanted to begin a new book, a new book, um, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, on the first Sunday of 2022. And so as I was praying about it, really seeking the Lord, um, he led me to the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. And that's where we'll be for the next few months. But how I usually do it when it comes to a new book is I usually give a thorough introduction to the book. So um, I've decided to just spend this Sunday to give you a good thorough introduction of Hebrews. So that way, when we do begin next week, you guys will have a pretty good idea what's going on, what's happening, and all that. So let us pray and ask the Lord to, to minister to us this morning. Um, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this morning. I want to thank you for allowing us to all be here, Lord. You have a plan and purpose, and we know that you are going to fulfill that. We know that we just want to be your obedient children, so we love you so much. So now, Lord, we ask that you continue to speak to our hearts, our minds, Lord. May we just continue to fall in love with you even more, Lord, especially as the new year begins. We, we don't know what the future holds, but you do. And where you're at is the best place to be. So now, speak to us again, Lord. Protect us, protect everyone in this room, Lord. Keep all our harm out of these doors, Lord, and May we just focus and concentrate on what you have to say to us. I pray for those watching and listening that you will bless them as well. Lord, lives will be changed at the end of this message. Pray this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, as many of you know, probably already know, every single world religion and major philosophy attempts to answer the fundamental questions, is there a God? Can we know him? If so, how? How can we make sense of the trials of this life and the certainty of death? Does it really matter what you believe as long as you're sincere? Well, the letter to the Hebrews answers all these basic questions, but I'll warn you, its answers don't really align to the popular views of our day. See, we live in a time when being tolerant and non-judgmental are primary virtues. Truth is viewed as subjective and personal, not absolute and universal. Thus, if Buddhism makes sense to you and gives you fulfillment, who am I to say that you're wrong? If you believe in Islam, Hinduism, Judaism, or, or any other of the world's religions, or a combination of them, as long as you're not hurting others, it would be judgmental for, of me to say that you're believing a lie. That's the prevailing thought or mindset of our tolerant nature, our culture. The only person they will not tolerate is someone who insists that his view is the only true view. The letter to the Hebrews cuts across this modern mindset by affirming that God is, that he has spoken, and that his son, who is the epitome of his revelation, is supreme overall. He demands total allegiance. He isn't tolerant of any rivals. To turn away from him to any other system or way of approaching God is to turn toward certain judgment. He alone will help us make sense of our trials. Thus, we must consider him more fully Submit to him at all times and trust him in all the trials of life. 
So the theme then of Hebrews is the absolute supremacy of Jesus Christ. And that it should motivate us to enduring faith in the face of trials. You see, when discouragement comes, and those times will come, the kind, you know, that kind of discouragement that screams questions at faith, we need encouragement and perspective. We need the community of faith. We need help to stay on the course, stay the course of commitment. Hebrews was written to offer such help. Now, furthermore, one of the key words that you'll regularly see in this book is the word better. Messiah Jesus is better. For example, than the angels and better than all the leading figures of the Hebrew Bible. As priest, he has offered up a better sacrifice than those offered by Israel's other priests. Consequently, his blood speaks of better things such as our eternal possession. Jesus is mediator of a better covenant based on better promises and officers offers us a better hope because God has provided something better for us, which in part is a better resurrection. The writer's aim, you see, in using this word is that the Jewish Messiah Jesus is even better than the Jewish religion that pointed to him. Now let me move on and also say that it's, it's not uncommon for people to refer this book to this book as simply as Hebrews. But technically it's a letter or an epistle. What makes this letter a little different though is that it doesn't begin with a salutation like you would see in Paul's letters. Yet other features of this book, particularly its end, share similarities with other, the other epistles in Scripture. And when it comes to when this letter was, was written, it's widely believed that it was penned before or between 63 and 70 AD, before the Romans destroyed the temple Herod built in Jerusalem. Now, there's a couple of reasons why people hold on to this belief. First, because it mentions a, this book mentions a sacrificial system in Jerusalem as if it were still in place. And secondly, chapter 13, verse 23, mentions Timothy, who we know from elsewhere in Scripture was a contemporary of the Apostle Paul. But here's the thing. Although we have a good idea of when this book may have been written, no one can say with absolute certainty who the author was. And we do know that the author was a second-generation Christian, Christian, for he said he received the confirmed message of Christ from those who heard Jesus himself. Now, there is this strong belief, this strong, um, a lot of people believe that Paul was probably the author. But the counter argument to that is his comments that he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 8, and also in Galatians. See, the comments he, the comments he made there would have eliminated Paul since... He claimed, and his words there say that he received the gospel directly from the Lord. Some have therefore suggested that since the writing styles are pretty similar, it could have been Luke. While others have also even suggested that it was perhaps Barnabas, Apollos, Silas, Philip, and even Aquila and Priscilla who wrote it. But truth is, 
we'll never know why the Lord chose to keep the author anonymous. But at this point, does it really matter? See, the fact is that we're reading it today, that those of us reading it today proves God's word is alive and will always stand the test of time. The person he used to write it was just his instrument. Now, I absolutely believe that if this wasn't God's word, it would have been lost like all the other apocryphal books that are out there. It just would have been lost. It would have been ignored. It would have just, you know. But that first generation church there in Jerusalem knew these were direct words from God. And it survived. It survived again over 2,000 years. And this now leads me to my point, my next point. Who the author was writing to and what for. The book of Hebrews was addressed to Jewish believers who were being pulled back into Judaism living in Jerusalem, it's possible that all their sights, their smells and sounds were coming from the temple. And it was reminding them of their heritage and their history. Now, for those of you who have a long heritage, a long family history, you know that it's hard to pull back from those things. Those of you who have come from a Catholic background like I have, know the, how deep tradi- family traditions are, how deep certain cultural traditions are like. And so, again, here you have now Christian Jews, those first set of, of Christian Jews, and they're seeing and smelling and hearing All these sounds coming from the temple. Yeah, they miss it. And so it's hard for them. They they feel the pressure coming from all kinds of different directions and in all of their senses. So as a result, many of them found themselves being drawn back into the religion and rituals of the Levitical system. Well, Jesus came to establish a new covenant, the New Testament. That's why there are very sober warnings throughout the book saying, if you go back to the old religion and ritual, you'll nullify the the work Christ did on the cross for you. So what Hebrews wants to point out to them and to us as well is to not complicate your faith. Keep it simple. Keep it focused. Keep it centered on Jesus. Now, the immediate danger threatening the readers was neither apathy, nor mere backsliding, nor paganism, nor Gnosticism. Rather, chapter 3, verse 12 makes it clear that the imminent peril was apostasy. For those who may not know, apostasy is the deliberate and permanent rejection of Messiah Jesus. In the reader's case, and again, those reading this letter, a return to or remaining within the Jewish faith without Jesus. Thus, the author's purpose was to exhort his readers to hold fast to their faith in Jesus as the Messiah because the Jewish Messiah is superior, superior even to the biblically revealed Jewish religion. It's important to clarify that in no way is he disparaging the Jewish religion, but rather demonstrating that it, it was designed since the beginning to point to Jesus to point to the coming Messiah. 
he will be exhorting them not to return to the shadow of the good things to come once they had experienced the reality to which it pointed. Now, throughout this book, the author issues five warning, warning passages to warn those among the readers who were considering abandoning Jesus as the Messiah, to fully embrace him as the one who brings complete salvation. Those passages reveal that some reading this letter were still fixated upon angels as servants of God, the Old Testament priesthood, the law of Moses, which again was the Old Covenant, and the earthly tabernacle. Now, after pointing this out, he will explain the necessity of embracing Jesus as their Messiah, since he's the Son of God and the King of Israel. And that he's also the highest high priest, who not only makes one covenantially and salvationally perfect, but who established a new covenant and has now entered into and serves in the heavenly tabernacle. Those warning passages indicate that some had not yet gone all the way to the covenantal perfection found only in Jesus. However, if they failed to do so, they would be outside the covenant that Jesus had founded. In other words, they wouldn't be saved. So overall, the letter's intent is twofold. To theologically demonstrate the Messiahship of Jesus, that to demonstrate the Messiahship of Jesus is the final and climactic word from God, superior to the Old Testament faith that merely pointed to him, and secondly, practically, not only to, to prevent the readers from turning away from their Messiah and returning to the temple worship alone, but also to encourage them to hold fast, to hold fast to their confession. In a nutshell, in a nutshell then, this book, this letter to the Hebrews was to instruct Jewish believers Judaism has been superseded by Christianity, the new covenant. Now, perhaps you, like many others, have avoided reading or really studying this epistle to the Hebrews because you've always found it a very difficult book to understand and to go through. I understand. I get it. When I first became a Christian, it was one of those books that just went over my head. I was a baby Christian. I was starting, I was understanding the, the Holy Spirit was really speaking to my heart. I was really understanding these other books and, and Paul's letters and, you know, totally digging Revelation, all the, you know, all the stuff in, in there and, but the Gospels, the words of Jesus, had a lot of meaning. But this Hebrews just was going over my head. You know, and I remember hearing a, a sermons telling me, like, the Lord will speak to you, will show you. Will, you may not get it now, but he, in, his, in his timing, when he's, you know, when you're ready, he will reveal to you which, that which you need to know. And yes, over time, I began to slowly really understand Hebrews. And, and again, maybe it was just a, re a reason and purpose for that. But again, I understand if it seems like it's a difficult book to understand. Or maybe you have this idea that you need to have a certain amount of Old Testament knowledge since there's all kinds of Old Testament references and names in there. Or some of the warnings that are mentioned make you uneasy, have made you uneasy. So it's just better to 
for you to skip it, to avoid it, to keep it, you know. Maybe those are the crispier pages in your Bible, you know. But um, it's just easier for you just to kind of skip through it. I'm not making any judgment. Again, again, I've just told you what, you know, that it was a difficult book for me to understand. But here's the thing. For the next couple of months, as I cover this book chapter by chapter, verse by verse, I will be there to help guide you through it. Again, I'm just a guide reading to you and explaining the passage, but it's the Lord who's going to be speaking to your heart if you just allow him to. That's why I always pray beforehand. You will have the open mind, open heart, open ears to receive his word. But he is the one who does the work. You got to have that open heart. That heart is shut. How is he going to speak to you personally and reveal things to you that are just going to blow your mind away? So again, I will be there with you, guiding you through it. But it's also going to take some effort on your part to accept the challenges that may come. Those challenges that are going to really convict you. So it's going to take your part to accept those challenges and pray that God will give you the strength to endure them. Now, before, again, we actually begin next week, one of the best ways to help you prepare for what's going to lie ahead is by pointing out five characteristics. Let me repeat that. Five characteristics of this letter. First of all, Hebrews will be a book of evaluation. Now, you're going to see throughout this book three important words, depending again on your translation. The words better, perfect, and eternal. When you combine, combine these three important words, you're going to discover that Jesus Christ and the Christian life he gives you are better because these blessings are eternal and they give you a perfect standing before God. The religious system under the Mosaic law is imperfect because it, could, it couldn't accomplish a once and for all redemption that was eternal. Hebrews will be a book of exhortation. The writer calls this epistle in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 22, the word of exhortation. The Greek word translated exhortation simply means encouragement. It's translated comfort in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, and consolation in 2 Corinthians. This word is related to the Greek word translated comforter in John chapter 14, verse 16, which is referring to the Holy Spirit, the epistle to the Hebrews, wasn't written to frighten people. It wasn't written to frighten you, but to encourage you, to encourage believers. We are commanded in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13, to encourage one another daily. It reminds us that we have a strong encouragement in Jesus Christ. Thirdly, Hebrews will be a book of examination. As you study this book, you will find yourself asking, what am I really trusting Am I trusting the word of God or am I trusting the things of this world that are shaking 
and ready to fall away. You see, Hebrews will help you discover where your faith really is. So yes, it will be a book of examination. Fourthly, Hebrews will be a book of expectation. The focus in this book is on the future. The writer informs us that he is speaking about the world to come. There in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5. A time when believers will reign with Christ. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is the heir of all things. And we share in the promise of an eternal inheritance. Like the patriarchs, patriarchs lauded in Hebrews chapter 11, we're looking forward as born-again Christians, as born-again believers for that future city of God. And lastly, Hebrews will be a book of exaltation. The epistle of Hebrews exalts the person and the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. The first three verses set this high and holy theme, which is maintained throughout the entire book. Their immediate purpose is to prove that Jesus Christ is superior to the prophets, men who held the highest esteem by the Jewish people. They held Moses at one of the highest esteems in regards to their, regarding their prophets. And so what Hebrews will, will tell us is that Jesus is greater than Moses. Greater than any of those prophet heroes they read about and they've known about their entire lives. We... As Americans, we have posters of our sports heroes and movie heroes. And I have a little figure of Captain America in my bedroom. And a little figurine, little, you know, I have little wrestling figurines too as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was a child, I was a big Hulk Hogan fan. But anyways, um, for the Hebrews, the Jews at this time, they were able to have posters. I'm sure they would have had posters of all their famous, you know, prophets that they enjoy. They were able to relate to and had some amazing stories. Men who had faith, even during difficult times. But here now, what he, the writer of Hebrews was saying is that Jesus is greater more superior than any of those prophets. So again, this book will be a book of evaluation, exhortation, examination, expectation, and exaltation. The deeper we dive into this book, I want you to keep in mind that my purpose our purpose is to not get lost in curious doctrinal details. Nor will my purpose be to attack or defend some popular doctrine. My purpose, our purpose, is to hear God speak in Jesus Christ and to heed that word. We want to echo the prayer of the Greeks. Sir, we would, we would see Jesus. If your purpose is to know Christ better and exalt him more in 2022, this year, then whatever differences you may have in your understanding of the book will be forgotten in your worship of him. Now, most of you know that back during this day, back in the day, 
people created idols made of wood and stone. But the reality is that even now in 2022, not much has really changed. True, people no longer worship little statues made of wood and stone. Well, maybe some do, but for the most part, no one really does that. But all they've actually done is replaced wood and clay statues for electronic toys, material wealth, and a comfortable lifestyle. Human beings have seen and experienced the limitless bounty of idolatry where we place some created object or person in the place of the one true God. And let me repeat that, where we place some created object, and let me emphasize, or person, in the place of the one true God. Some people do put their kids, their parents, their spouses above the one true God. That, my friends, is idolatry. I know it's hard. I love my wife to pieces, and, you know, maybe there was a time when I was putting her above God, and I admit it, and, but I suffered as a result of that. And it really caused a lot of, a lot of issues because I had done that. But when God, again, became the center of my life, I knew that the best thing for her, the best thing for my children is to put God above them. That's the security that I can give her, that she can have, and that my kids will have as well. Because what happens usually when you lose an idol your life seems like it's crushed. Life seems like it's over. What are your idols? And whatever that idol is, it's time to give it up to God. He wants you to surrender it all. He wants you to give it all up. He wants you to give it to him. And if he tosses it, he tosses it for a reason. He wants to be number one in your life. You have to allow him. You have to trust him. He, the creator of this universe, who spoke everything into existence, he knows you better than you know yourself. He knows what's best for you. He wants you to have a better life. He wants you to have a better relationship with your children, with your spouses. He wants you to be a better worker. He wants you to give up those idols that you've been holding on to your entire life. It's probably some still there that I haven't necessary in my life that I haven't necessarily recognized yet but I know that when he points them out to me I know it's gonna like it usually has it's gonna hurt but if I want to be a better pastor if I want to be a better friend better as I said husband father I need to give it up if I want to be a better son to my Heavenly Father, I need to give it up. And that's my advice for you. It's easier to give it up to God than have him snatch it out of you, you know, take it away from you. So let me, again, ask you, what idols do you hold dear in your life? 
Well, the letter to the Hebrews makes it clear, clear that the only one person deserves, that only one person deserves to hold the primary place in our lives. So while we're busy idolizing our move up the corporate ladder, we're placing all our hopes in our kids, Jesus offers us a better position, a better priest, a better covenant, a better hope, and a better sacrifice. As we go through this book, you're going to discover that the message of Hebrews is as timely today as it was in the first century of the, of the church. As Christians and as a church, we need to be constantly reminded of the eternal privileges and blessings that are ours in Christ. Hebrews, therefore, will encourage you to endure in spite of opposition and difficulties and will also warn all professing believers against reverting to ceremonial religion after having tasted and seen the Lord is good. Listen, there are only two kinds of people who hear God's word. Those who are not yet his children and those who are True, some are nearer than others on the road to Christ. But nevertheless, there are only these two categories. So to those who are not yet true, children's of, true children of God, I give you this challenge. Read one of the Gospels. I usually lean towards the Gospel of John, but read it all the way through while sincerely praying to God, speak to me. Please speak to me. I also challenge you to carefully study the book of Hebrews, for in it you'll find life-changing thoughts that are unique to the New Testament. Now I also challenge those who are God's children, who do view Hebrews as a necessary practical book. You may be beleaguered and perhaps even wondering if you can continue on with life. Maybe you are in a fierce storm. Maybe you are in a really dry desert in life right now. And perhaps... You're looking for a manual that will help you handle that stress. Well, Hebrews is the manual. Because the essential answer is in the supremacy and finality of Christ. Let me close by saying this. Only when we give Jesus his rightful place in our lives will everything in life fall into its rightful place. Many of you are again can testify to that. I sure can too. My, my life was wrecked before I rededicated my life to the Lord. And you know what? Miraculously, put it right. Even if I would have still lost my family and I still would have lost my job, being with him, being in him, being one with him is the right place to be. Will always be the right place. Yes, you may lose everything. But as a child of God, you will always have Christ. He will never leave you nor abandon you. 
He has you in the palm of his hand. And nothing, no one will be able to snatch you away from him. The problem is that many times we will walk away from that. But as the song goes, you know, we'll go out and leave the 99 to go look for the one. Every time I hear that song, I, it hits hard for me. Because you could have left me. I deserve to be left. But you came for me. And now I'm, I feel so peaceful, so full of joy being now in the palm of his hand. So if you're watching and listening to this message, and you're ready to either return to the palm of Savior's hand, or you've never been there, I want to invite you to the cross in order to surrender your life, to hand your sins over, just to that baggage you're carrying, just to dump it there in front of the cross and become born again. Become a child of God and experience that joy, that peace, that mercy that grace that only God can give you, that fulfillment that nothing in this world will ever fulfill. Come to him. It's never too late. Never too late. Start off the year, the first Sunday of 2022, by surrendering your life to the Lord, by being born again becoming a child of God. Don't worry about the future. Don't worry about your friends. Don't worry about your job. He'll take care of that. Right now, he wants you to make a choice. He wants you to make a decision. He wants you to Reach out to him, to love him freely. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do any works. You don't have to do this or that. Or No, you just say, just come to me. So if you're ready to begin this year with a new life, a new perspective, a, a fresh vision, I want to lead you in a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So wherever you're at, if you're in a safe place, if you're able to, I want you to close your eyes. If you're able to kneel down, go ahead and do that. Pray this with all your heart. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead three days later. I now repent of my sins. I turn away from those sins and confess you as my personal Lord and Savior from this day forward. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me new life. So now I ask that you fill me to the brim with the Holy Spirit. 
so that others may see you through me. So that others will glorify you by what you've done in my life. Fill me with the Holy Spirit so that he may help guide me, teach me, protect me in my new born-again life. In your name, amen. If you prayed that, please reach out to us. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your story. If you're in a different country or if you're in a different state, we can help you find a church in your area that will teach you the Word of God. That you know, You're not going to go and hear a motivational speaker. You're not going to go to hear... You know, just to hear a, or see a, a, sh- a concert with smoke and lights and all that. No. I want to help you find a church where you'll, they'll teach you the Word of God. So if you're here in the area, we can do that as well. But we also want to invite you to come here and check us out. Our doors will always be open to you no matter what you look like, what you've been through. Believe me. Many of us have been through similar things or even worse. There's no judgment here. If there is, let me know and I'll have a talk with anybody. (laughs) I love them, but I'll have a talk. But again, we welcome you. um, And we want to help you in your next steps of your new born again life. That will conclude today's message for those watching. Um, Again, we're going to begin Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, um, next week. And we'll begin, as I said, covering this chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Uh, So I hope you can join us. If uh, if you want to hear our previous message, I just, this past year I covered... First and Second Samuel, um, some amazing stories there too. So, but um, looking forward to this. What the Lord will be teaching us, as I said, there's a lot here that He's going to show us. This is going to be a great book. I'm excited. I I really believe I'm going to be, you know, learning, getting a lot of great chunks of wisdom. And you know, as I said, I'm just looking forward to seeing where the Lord has me and this church at the end of this new year. But thank you again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week. If you can, please share this video to anyone who needs to hear it or just send it out there to share it. And, uh, and I'm sure the Lord will do with it as he pleases. Thank you. Have a great week. Love you. Goodbye. Thank you so much for visiting us here at Fresh Vision Calvary Chapel. We hope you were blessed by Pastor Angel's message. For more information about Fresh Vision Calvary Chapel, such as our service time or how to get connected, please visit our website at fvccelp.com. If the Lord is leading you to give to the ministry of Fresh Vision Calvary Chapel, there's a PayPal link in the video description below. Once again, thank you so much for visiting us here at Fresh Vision Calvary Chapel. We hope to see you again soon.